Hi everyone, it's Cam here. I've been asked to do a walkthrough of the NeuroVisual Trainer app. So I just wanna take you through what we've learned over the last uh, number of months of use and hopefully you find it helpful so people can get running up and quickly. So the very first thing that I do when I log in often is flip it into dark mode. Uh, up here at the top right, you can either have it in light mode or dark mode. Um, so the next thing a lot of you are gonna to wanna to get into right away is adding your staff. So click on the staff button, you can go through, you can invite new staff, uh, whether they're staff or administrators, um, you can get them all set up on there. So once the staff have been added, have your staff add their patients, uh, that way they're auto assigned to that staff member, although you can change who they are assigned to, but if you have your therapists add their patients, um, the patients are gonna show up here in the users area. So you can see right here, here's the patient, there's the email, who they're assigned to, uh, the patient, the basically the days here of the week. So you can see what days they've actually done their home training and when they haven't, um, and it'll actually show what exercises and things have been completed, whether they've logged in or not, etc. The buttons over to the right on the patient, basically you can view what the application looks like as that patient. So you can see when Cameron logs in, um, basically there's a bunch of exercises uh, listed there. Um, as we come back out, you can actually see the progress report. So things like Randot and other stuff with scoring uh, will show up in the progress report. You can see some nice graphs over time. The little green button here is for assigning exercises to the patient. So you can go through, choose what you're assigning to the person, give them special instructions that week. Um, so we can delete an exercise, we can add exercises choosing from the list of interactive ones that are based within the computer program. So for example, if we choose random dot jump deductions, you can put in through here any special instructions, duration, prism work, prism size separation, custom working distances, and even further advanced configurations. So there's tons of flexibility in there, although it can also be kept very, very simple as needed. So once that's set up, you can save the exercises for that person and the trash can, you can archive the user. So that's basically how to get the staff and users set up. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to look at is the exercise library or activity library and how to upload your own custom ones. So under the exercises themselves, these are all the computer-based ones separated into a few different categories um, and all set up through here. So feel free, have a look, play around. There's some great stuff in there. And I know that the team is actually always adding more things too. They've been super responsive to us. In the videos section, this is sort of videos and not videos. This little one called test here is actually a custom one that we, that I just uploaded. Um, and I'll show you how to do that after. Now, under the video library, these are things where if we go through, for example, anaglyph heart chart, um, you can actually see on the video here, it's actually gonna give video instructions on using the anaglyph heart chart. Uh, which is super helpful. The interactive metronome can actually be played on any of the instruction sets, so that can be seen or while, um, while somebody's doing it. Speaking of the metronome, if we dive over into tools, you can actually see here there is a metronome app that anybody can use. You can change the sound for those of who don't like certain sounds and you can change the speed. So the interactive metronome app is super handy. Under here as well, there's printable heart charts and other sheets that can all be set up. Uh, so this has been really great for those who wind up memorizing heart charts. So lots of good printable material under there for people. The equipment section is being set up because I know the NeuroVisual Trainer team is working to source some of these things um, to help make things accessible and cost friendly for clinics. Um, I don't believe they're up yet, uh, but I'd expect that soon. So the next piece is now that we've seen the exercises and videos, one of my favorite things about getting to use this program is the ability to upload custom exercises. So back in the main screen, the custom exercises area up at the top right, you can click on, you can see, so I had uploaded that test exercise, we can delete that one if we don't want it, um, but we can create an exercise. When you're asked to create the exercise, you get to put in the title, you can assign it to a category, um, put in a short description and a video link. 
So I am aware that the team is working on getting it so that the videos are all hosted and uploaded internally. Um, but for right now, what's been recommended is to do it on a private YouTube or Vimeo channel. Um, and then, so it's not searchable from the outside, but you can put the link in there for your patients and staff. And then you can actually just put the instructions down below. And when you click create, it'll create that exercise. Um, so if we come back through here, we click create and we put in that one title is called test test um, give it a category and create the video exercise it'll actually run through um, and put it into that category which we can then get rid of the last sort of custom thing to this which is super handy is the reading texts so with neurovisual trainer we can actually upload and create our own reading texts so you can again put in a title Put in the body of the text that's to be read, um, add the comprehension questions, choose a reading level, choose whether it's adults or children. Um, and then for attribution, you can also say where that uh, reading material was sourced that you put in there too. Um, so there is some preloaded reading material, but that's a really handy way to be able to add custom stuff uh, for people to be able to add articles that they want to read, all sorts of things like that too. Um, so those are really the basics. Uh, the only last thing I can think of, which was kind of jumping out to me was the calibrate button. This comes up for patients when you assign Randot or things like that, uh, where basically they're going to have to calibrate their screen by using the size of a standard credit card. Cause not everybody has a ruler on hand. So you can calibrate the screen, the working distance, you can choose how far away are you sitting? Um, and whether your anaglyph glasses are red on the left or red on the right. Uh, which opens it up to the use of lots of different anaglyph glasses because the purpose of this program was to make something easy and accessible. So uh, that's the calibration. Don't worry, that happens automatically for patients when they're doing certain activities, but at any given time, you can also go up and calibrate as needed. So hopefully you found this intro helpful. Uh, this program has been fantastic in our clinic for quite a while now. Um, and hopefully uh, as everybody gets using it, uh, people will find the same thing. Just one other quick note for the very end of this, and it comes down to how responsive the development team has been. If you click at the bottom right, there's the option to use the intercom where you can actually search some of the articles, but you can also start a conversation with the development team on that. Um, so, and when you talk to them, I mean, as far as adding features, changing language, bugs, things like that, that you find um, super, super receptive guys to that. They jump on the stuff really, really quickly. Um, this is sort of one of those platforms that the more of us who use it uh, and the better that we make it, the better it's going to wind up being for everybody. So for example, in the videos, you'll notice some of those videos have been given in um, by my clinic. Uh, some of them were given in by Paul's clinic. Um, for use within the platform. And I know hopefully one of the future things that's gonna be there is the ability for people to share videos and activities with each other. Um, so there's been some sort of cool stuff that I think will eventually be in the works that'll just allow for all of us to collaborate uh, way more effectively. Um, but obviously under those sharing settings, if you don't wanna share it, you don't have to. It'd just be like an optional thing to put it out there. Um, but I know that's sort of some of the cool kind of spirit of things. So again, back to that, because it is kind of crowdsourced, um, you know, get in there, use it, figure out what could be better, um, share it with them. Uh, because the more we do that, the better of a platform we're going to have to help more people with VT. So thank you very much. Everybody stay safe, stay healthy. Um, and hopefully, uh, the program will do for you what it's done for us.